listen to a young girl who was saying that the Arab community here is totally very angry. So be very interested in this point at all. Yes, so With too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. You know, after some of these earthly adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these red lights on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet. And we are harvesting snails at the African Center for Community and Development that we intend to cook Eru, Ginetum Africanum, which is the threatened plant vegetable, which is widely consumed in West and Central Africa, and it's a main staple in Cameroon. Just across, you can see fowls. At the center, we are growing a free range chicken. We shall be doing an open air cooking of Eru. Eru is eating with fufu. And we are harvesting giant snails in order that we can reduce the number of snails that we have at the African Center for Community and Development. Snail farming can be a way of improving on the diets of aero subpopulations, especially as access to red meat is limited in certain categories and is expensive. Snails are also very healthy and can be a major source of food, as you can see. So you can see how light the snails are when they come out of their shells. This could actually be a strategy to fight poverty in many parts of the world and to improve on access to proteins which are viable in the fight against diseases, especially in areas where diseases are endemic. Now, Valentine, these snails were harvested from the snail pen of the African Center for Community and Development. Wow. Why did you choose these particular snails to harvest? As you can see, we choose some of the ones that are big, bigger in size. So they were smaller quantities of these than the large pot of soup. So these are very mature snails then? Yes. They are very mature, quite mature. They have been laying eggs, and some of them might still lay eggs. Okay. So you need a sharp object to send inside this, the snail shell to bring out the, the mix. You can see these um, different species of Achatinade and this we had the parent stock from just around and this you can also find it along the west coast of Limbe in the forested areas and these are called Idinao and they have somewhat kind of reddish under but this is more brownish 
And so we will be using both of these species in our meal for today. We are going to be using Gary to wash the snails. It is an alternative to alum. The intention is to remove the slime that the snails have in order that they become edible by man. Gary is also affordable and accessible to most households in Cameroon. Snail washing is very needed as snails they have slime and hands can impact negatively on the outcome of the meal you're trying to cook if they're not very well washed. Before you realize the slime is going to be submerged in the gallery and we will be moving on to rinsing it and um, Valentine you bought gallery for how much to use in, in the washing of this I bought two cups of gallery for 150 francs and that is alum Valentine can you show it's going to be mixed with the gallery in order to make sure that the slime is effectively taken out of the snails we are trying to prepare. So you can see the snails are now sparkling, they are very clean. They will be cut into shapes that are going to be used in the cooking of oil so that they are more presentable and nice, both visually and in the mouth. So the snails have been fixed. These two have been fixed, their shapes are now mutated. But then, when it's like this, the ingredients can penetrate more. So, we are about to prepare Eru. As our snails are already washed, they are very, very clean. They are no longer slimy. You can see with the ease with which I can pick the pieces. This is smudge. All this comes from the snail pen of the African Center for Community and Development. You too can have your own snail pen. Knowledge about this can be vulgarized and many more stakeholders can be able to do this. And to prepare Eru, apart from the Eru vegetable itself, we also have water leaf. Water leaf is also going to be used to soften the Eru and we shall cut it into smaller pieces then we shall use with Eru as well for now we're going to start with the meat first but I've got some paper with me generally things from Africa or the meals in Africa are a little bit hot as you know so we have yellow and red paper that is here and we shall be using it to prepare our meal as well and <coughs> Traditionally, those from my new division use a lot of the skin of, of, of cattle in the cooking of, of air. So we shall be supplementing the taste and the presentation with some cow skin and a bit of red meat 
as it is done when we do not have snails just so that many more users can understand how we cook um, Eru, Ginetum, Africanum which is a threatened plant vegetable in West and Central Africa and that we are also advocating indirectly in this video on the need to domesticate this plant vegetable and to make sure that more users can have access to it as it has very high um, plant proteins as well and hence can be a viable weapon to step up resilience against diseases and to step up well-being and this is the fire that I have arranged with Valentine it's done traditionally like what the women do in rural areas with wood, with fast growing timber, with rejected wood from a building project. You can see this is rejected wood. There's a nail there. And so, we should be able to do this kind of job so that we can also help in reducing the dust of our women folks who are strategizing a lot in sustaining the livelihoods in Africa as well. So I will be bringing the meat to boil here. When it boils, we shall be adding some other spices to make sure that it goes on well. The pepper is soaked in a bit of water so that I can rinse. Doing some rinsing. You know, now we got yellow pepper. It also grows in the northwest region of Cameroon, and now it's been planted in some areas in the southwest region of Cameroon. It has a very nice flavor. Today I'm not grinding because I wouldn't want all of it to to burst in the soup, so that average users can as well eat. And those that want more of um, hot pepper can now use that which has been cooked inside their own plates to increase the hotness. So then, these are the snails that I will be adding now to the meat. And some salt. Much of estimation should be both physically and in the mind. This salt is good. It has to be a bit sharp. In African parlance, they say meat like snails are a little bit cold. Therefore, they need sharp spices to make sure that they get hotter and tasty. And I've got some Maggie cubes with me. I will try three in the broth and I might step up a couple when I must have tasted to see whether it goes or not. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to fill out the stuff, but one has to. And when you go through these tricky processes, then you understand what. The millions of women out there go through to probably bring food on the table. It's not very easy. So, indirectly, at the African Center for Community and Development, we are trying to vulgarize knowledge in the use of alternatives to expensive red meat like snails. And also to incidentally fight poverty by bringing more users to grow their own food. We are advocating on a philosophy of holistic homes in which people will cook their food, recycle their waste, and grow the kind of biodiversity or species that they want. And in that, fight poverty from within if macroeconomics fails. Sometimes, which it does many times, and sometimes it's impacted by issues like speculation on food, and that leaves a lot of people 
craving in the backdrop from high prices. So let's not get into economics. Let's cook. Mm -hmm. The pepper, the salt and the maggi has to be mixed. And I will be adding some water. And I need to add enough water so that all the meat and the stuff in this pot is going to boil well and probably one can multitask. You don't need to put just a bit of water and then you have to come to open the pot from time to time. If you put enough water, it's going to boil for a long time and hence you can do other things. Some other important tasks as well. So there you go. It is ready. You can see. And I will be taking Wow. So it's going to boil, but I have to cover the leaves. This is the tricky leaf that was hiding. I, I got it. So, maybe we have to blow a bit so that the fire becomes a little bit hot. But this is going to be able to cook the meal. Before we add other aspects like water leaf and gravy. Don't go away. And Valentine is trying to push some some wood into the fire so that we have more fire and today is slightly windy and therefore we are very sure that the fire is going to be on for a long while and our food is going to be ready there you go Just like our great grandmothers did, so we are doing and replicating while striding on the sidewalks of the 21st century. So you see, the water leaf is being cut into smaller pieces. From here we shall wash the leaves and put the wash leaves, the wash water leaves into the pot to boil alongside the meat. The advantage is the advantage of doing that is to make sure that the leaves can also draw the taste of the meat that is boiling and hence to improve on the taste as well. It's going to be used in mixing the arrow and to soften it as arrow is a very hard edible vegetable. The washing of water leaf so that if there are any dust particles they will be removed before it is added to the broth to boil with the meat the snails so the water leaf is effectively rinsed it has to be done a couple of times to be sure that there are no dead particles. Clean cooking is also very important and it 
reduces the chances of diseases and must be encouraged in many parts of the world. Everything is boiling very well. The fire is hot enough and uh, I will be placing the, the lid somewhere clean and uh, now I have to add the water lid. It's, it's, it's nice to be done with the hands. <laughs> Maybe I should use a spoon as well. Wow. And we have more than enough water leaf. This is going to be used to soften the air. A lot of smoke. Like grandmoms in the village, they face a lot of threats from smoke. We have to do this more to make our societies more equal than the way they are. I'm not saying they are unequal, I'm saying we need more equality. So I'm going to be closing the pot for the water leaf to boil with the meat. Afterwards I'm going to add some crayfish which is going to boil alongside the water leaf that must have mixed up with the meat. Then we shall start thinking about adding air. Crayfish as many of you know in West Africa, Central Africa and it is very important in the cooking of African meals. It adds taste, it adds flavor, and so we are going to be using it in the cooking of Eru. It's very important as well. And we are going to be adding the crayfish to water leaf, which has been boiling with the snails in the pot. The importance of crayfish and other crustaceans makes it very necessary for us to conserve mangroves because in most cases mangroves are the breeding grounds for this kind of aquatic species including sedentary oysters therefore in conserving mangroves we'll have more crayfish that we will use in cooking our eel everything is linked and that is why we must look at a holistic approach to sustainable development when we are dealing with issues related to development management. And it is the business of the African Center for Community and Development. So crayfish that seems distant to a forest, a forest species like Eru is very linked because you can't cook Eru without crayfish. So you see how coastal livelihoods twine with forest livelihoods in the cooking of Eru as well. So I will be mixing our stuff with the crayfish. There's still enough water. When it's getting a bit dry, that's when I'm going to add the Eru. Sometimes it's nice to To check on your crayfish to see whether it's got any foreign particles before adding it to the broth. In this case, we've thoroughly done so, and we will be allowing it to mix and to get part of the taste of from the snails as well. It's coming up. Seriously, it's coming up. <laughs> it's going to be very tasty. The leftover water leaf 
from uh, cooking of arrow goes to our fowls as you can see valentine feeding them there with the water leaf so nothing is wasted we recycle everything and this is to ensure that farmers know this kind of knowledge systems that can help them to grow food to live healthy lives which is vital for their own development and the development of society there you go and that is Eru, the threatened plant vegetable eating across Africa and known to have high levels of protein but threatened by unsustainable harvesting methods and human activities stretching from the logging of forest areas to the expansion of urban areas into forested areas. This is the main component of our meal and we need to wash it like the water leaf as well thoroughly so that there are no foreign particles and we shall be rinsing the leaves a couple of times they normally do not occur like this they've been cut and sliced into these edible particles when our broth must have had enough boiling and must have had the crayfish ready and mixed up with the snails and the water leaf we will introduce arrow in the pot we shall mix the arrow with the water leaf to get a fine mix then we shall add red oil and to allow the what we've mixed to cook for a while and not so long from then we would be expecting to have our arrow ready Eru is almost, if not a national dish now in Cameroon and in many parts of Africa it is cooked in many ways sometimes in gra with granite paste and sometimes it is cooked in villages with cocoyam leaves to substitute water leaves The last rinsing of the arrow before it is in shape to be introduced within the pot. Everything is boiling, and from the amount of water that we can see in the pot it is clear that it is time for us to introduce aero so that this limited amount of water we have here will help it to mix well with our water leaf the broth and all and to boil for a while You have to do it bit by bit and mix. Bit by bit and mix. So that the arrow can be well mixed with 
all of the spices that we put before in the pot. So the first batch is mixed. I'll continue here. Make sure it's going dry. So that water is not born again. Water is not born again in the pot. That's to the air. Therefore, I have to squeeze the meat. There you go. Clearing your hands is a bit tricky after this. But then we have water in Africa, and there seems to be much more groundwater being discovered in many parts of Africa, even in dry areas around Tukana land in East Africa. But now we are in West Central Africa and we are cooking hero, which is a very loved vegetable. Wow, the mixing is perfect, it's rich. have to leave it to boil for a while with the other vegetables and the snail then it will be time for red oil and we will be serving our air with water for food which is the food food that has been made out of fermented cassava this is called manioc in several parts of the world. And despite the fact that it has been threatened with diseases like the brown strike disease and the cassava mosaic, scientists across Africa and local farmers are doing everything to maintain this crop species because it is widely eaten. Eru has boiled well with the the other things is mixed well. Now it's time for us to introduce oil. You can see it's quite green. Part of the aesthetic is to be able to cook the arrow so that even though it's ready, it does not lose its natural color. Then it's not overcooked in a way. Here goes our red oil or the palm oil it's eating across Africa even though it's facing some, some threats now from the production of biogas and the fears that it might be production of palm oil might be diverted towards the production of other sources of energy it is still widely used across Africa and we will not be using too much of it though as we are also thinking that in the use of palm oil we have to be moderate in order to avoid excessive cholesterol in the system which can cause some heart ailments in society so you can see a bit of oh <laughs> they'll do the magic our arrow is about to be ready the arrow with snails a wonderful meal in Cameroon, in West Africa, which is eating with full food. It's a couple of minutes from being served. Now I have to allow the red oil to make in the contraption. 
so that I can have the taste of all what we've been boiling. And when that is done, then we are sure our meal is ready to be eaten with fufu. Don't go away. The arrow is finally ready. This is how arrow looks like when it's ready. And the snails are all inside. It's a very rich meal. Got many across subpopulations appreciate in Africa. And you can see the snail in it. So the snail is another one. And I have to take it out from the fire. A job well done. Wow. The next thing is going to be water fufu that we shall eat with the arrow. And this is water fufu and Valentine has made sure that we can have a very wonderful fufu. Water fufu is made out of fermented cassava and it is mixed like this to produce this fufu which we shall be eating with arrow. How our ancestors decided to mix these two things as a food type is a science in its own self. This fufu is rich in carbohydrates, arrow is a rich plant in that it has plant proteins and then the contraptions that go inside arrow are also rich. Therefore, we must encourage such meals across the continent and in the world in order that people might live more healthy in the 21st century with all its challenges. I'm about to set the arrow and the fufu. The fufu has been made in balls like this and I will dish with some arrow indeed there's a lot of snails in it this is how arrow is set and I think we got some people who like the arrow yeah Enjoy your meal. Okay. Yes. And more arrow. That's what I'm serving here. The snails make it so great. I think it's very good. The green and the white, the contrast. And I think the colors of nature are really represented here in the meal. Well, time. We have just cooked arrow and fufu here at the African Center for Community and Development. Now, how do they eat it? Normally, you wash your hands very well, take your time. And the saliva can, you, can make you miss your <laughs> mouth. Wow, how does it taste? Excellent, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Eru, we're serving here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you like it? <laughs> Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Okay. And this is the room. It's very nice, very tasty. So we've been covering all the steps and the intricate patterns in the design and the cooking of the Eru meal in Cameroon and Africa and we hope it's going to be replicated. That's an arrival for people, places and events at the African Center for Community and Development. So be very interested in this point at more than two. With too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. You know, after some of these heavily adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these red lights on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet.